Hey, I'm Chris Roth, the professional prospector. and Today we're going to talk about volcanoes and gold. Now, I get a lot of people that ask me regularly, hey, there's a volcano, old volcano near me. Uh, should I be finding gold around my old volcano? Um, you know, and, and related questions, but it's not anything new. I mean, the old timers, you know, they saw rounded, blobby gold nuggets, and their assumption was that the nuggets got rounded and kind of blob-like because they were shot out of a volcano. And, and as the molten gold was flying through the air, it, it kind of solidified into these rounded, blobby shapes, and that's where the gold came from. And no modern geologists think that. <laughs> but there's actually a couple of towns, and they're not right next to each other, in the California gold country, in the Mother Lode gold country, that are one's called Volcano, and the other's called Volcanoville, so they don't have the same name. And, uh, and they're named that way because, like I say, the old timers thought uh, volcanoes erupted metallic gold. But, like I say, no one believes that anymore. But geologists do believe that gold can be volcanic related. The Hawaiian volcanoes have been a lot in the news lately, although they, it seems like they're petering out or, or, you know, going dormant for a little bit. But they come on and off all the time. I mean, over the years, uh, you know, I went to Hawaii a couple of decades ago and, and went and stood next to some, some lava. But let's, let's take a look at uh, the Hawaiian volcanoes that have been in the news and spewing out lava. And it's kind of cool. Let's take a look at that. The most recent activity was uh, centered at Mauna Loa, one of the basically the biggest volcano that's still active on the surface of the earth. And when it first started erupting, it was uh, at several places in a small area, but it quickly settled down to just one vent that was producing pretty much all of the lava that was coming out. And you can see just looking down on this vent that it uh, looks pretty spectacular with lava flying out there in the form of a fountain and a river draining away. You can see from a more horizontal view that the lava just comes spewing out of there. It, it comes out in what they call a fountain. Now, you might wonder, well, what's making it shoot into the air like this? Well, there's actually dissolved gases in the rock, and uh, it consists of steam and a lot of sulfur dioxide and uh, other minerals, nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, that come out of the lava as it gets closer to the surface. And as it gets closer to the surface, these bubbles form and just literally lift the lava up into the air. Uh, you know, as, as the bubbles open up to the pressure of the, the atmosphere outside, they're un they've been under pressure and they sh make everything shoot out up the top. Here you can see the river of lava flowing downhill from the vent. It was headed towards one of the major highways on the island of Hawaii, and for a while they were pretty concerned that uh, the highway might get inundated with lava. But luckily toward the end, as the rate of lava coming out of the vent slowed way down, the river was diverted uh, just naturally into a different direction, and the uh, highway, the threat on the highway was eliminated. This image from the side shows much better the cloud of pollution that's coming off this. In Hawaii, they call it bog because it's volcanic-related smog. And the material coming off here, it's not mostly steam. In fact, there's very little water vapor in this. It's mostly sulfur, sulfur dioxide and other minerals, other gases coming off that really are pretty nasty. And as we're going to see in a few minutes as we get on with this video, that sulfur is something that's really necessary for the formation of gold deposits. You need to keep it in the system and not just release it to the air. So, like I say, it does look like they're kind of dying out for the time being. They'll come back. I mean, it's just a matter of years and then psh, they'll be spewing lava again. And so, you know, they're constantly in the news and sometimes they do major damage. Luckily, this time they, they didn't do any, or at least so far, it hasn't done any real damage. But the question remains, how related, you know, how do volcano, volcanoes make gold? How is it related? How vol is volcanic action related to making gold? 
in order to have volcanic actions and, and, and activity form gold, you have to have certain things. Some of the things, in fact, in Hawaii, none of those things are present. What you have to have is water, and you can see from the, the pictures we looked at of the Hawaiian volcano, there's no, no water there. You have to have uh, the sulfur that comes out has to be restrained and contained so it can be part of a system That's because it's sulfur-related chemical reactions that help dissolve and redeposit the gold in the hot water. And then you have to have a long period of time. You know, the volcanoes that we see in Hawaii, and that stuff solidifies in a matter of days or maybe at most weeks. And it quickly, you know, is just another hard rock. So uh, you have to have time for a gold deposit to form. Look, I have a specimen of lava. This is actually a hardened lava. I think it was from a flow from the late 1700s. So it wasn't like I was there when it was molten. But it, it's lava from Hawaii. This is actually a piece of solidified basalt from Hawaii. And it, it has a special name because it has these little lines on it, the little ropey lines. I don't know if you can see that. The, the lines there make it, it's called Pahoahoa. That's a Hawaiian name. And it means ropey lava. And this lava was liquid and it got a skin on it just from moving the, the molten lava underneath. And this little skin, it's, it's like a kind of a skin on pudding. If you've ever eaten pudding, it has a skin on it. Well, that's a lava skin. But the evidence is this stuff cooled real fast, matter of maybe hours or days. That's not enough time to form a gold deposit. In order to form a gold deposit, the, the molten rock, the magma they call it, has to be restrained down low. It has to come near enough to the surface so that the heat of the molten rock can drive the formation of the system that, that deposits the gold but it can't come up onto the surface and erupt and cool. At least in geologic terms, it cools like that. When you're talking geology time-wise, it cools, you know, really quick. You need to have it be around and hot for a, a, a matter of many thousands of years. And like I say, you have to have water and you have to have the sulfur all be constrained in the system, not just shot out into the air and lost. Let's take a look at a video that I have that I shot in Yellowstone years ago that kind of shows you the type of system that would be producing gold. And many geologists have speculated there probably are gold and other deposits forming down deep in Yellow, the Yellowstone area, similar kinds of areas in Nevada that are much older and but once had this same kind of volcanic activity are now full of gold deposits because not only has the time passed for them to cool, they've been uplifted and now they're exposed on the surface. So you see that stuff. But for the uh, Yellowstone deposits, they're, you know, still much further down deep, but we can see the surface activity. So let's take a look at that. So here's what you might expect of uh, a gold deposit that's forming down deep to look like on the surface. There's certainly plenty of water. There's hot gases shooting up and you, you can't sm you know smell this, but when I was there, I could tell you it certainly had a sulfury smell. So down deep, there are probably gold deposits forming, uh, pyrite and other sulfur, sulfide minerals. And that's kind of what you would expect a gold deposit to look like. You see the hot water and the sulfur are necessary to dissolve uh, the traces of gold in the rock and then move them and redeposit them. You see that around the mouth of this vent, there's also some brownish material that's being deposited. That includes some iron, and the iron and the sulfur are both necessary, too, to move the gold and, and dissolve it out of rock and, and then form into veins and other deposits and put the gold back down so that it can be concentrated and hopefully into an economic deposit. 
So there you have it. You know, is, is gold associated with volcanoes? Do volcanoes make gold? Yes. Um, do all volcanoes know, make gold? Absolutely not. Do some kinds of volcanoes make for gold? Yes, they do. But it's not like, oh, you have an active volcano and it just went dormant and now you're gonna have gold deposits everywhere. Uh, literally the, you know, the ones in Nevada that are in the, in volcanic rocks and there's, you know, gold deposits in volcanic rocks in California, Arizona, and a lot of other places. But Nevada has a lot of them. And uh, it takes time because not only does it have to form, but it forms down deep and then has to be uplifted to the surface where people can see it. So it takes time, it takes sulfur, it takes water, and you have to have all those things to be the kinds of volcanoes that make for related to gold. And it ends up being that it's the siliceous volcanoes, the um, ones that tend to explode, and, and even not like Mount St. Helens, like way, way worse explosions than Mount St. Helens that you know a lot of times the lava never actually makes it to the surface and so it's down deep it drives these systems and it forms gold deposits this is a black basaltic rock okay these are the kinds that you don't normally see gold now it's not that there's no gold deposits associated with basalt that's not true but it's much more common to see it associated with what they call acidic or dulcic kinds of, of volcanic rocks that uh, don't tend to go out and flow out onto the surface. That's just the kind of volcanoes that are related to making gold deposits. Now, I'll tell you that most of my videos are about gold. And, you know, we do talk about the geology of gold like this. I also go out in the field and, uh, and metal detect and dry wash and do other things and find some cool gold. And, you know, I, I like doing that, but it's a skill. It's a skill that I've acquired over a lot of years. And if you have any interest in finding some gold for yourself, well, you might want to acquire that skill. And in order for you to gain that skill, in order for people to learn more about prospecting for gold, I wrote a book. And the book is called Fistful of Gold because, hey, that's what I want you to find. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold. And I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.